Hello friends, how are you doing? Today I'm taking you with me in a new adventure in the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization where you can see the royal mummies and many other artifacts. But before we start, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and tell me in the comments which place you would like to visit with me the next video. In my opinion, the best way to go to the museum and the easiest is by metro. And the nearest metro station to the museum is Al Malik Al Saleh. There you can find a transportation. Welcome to Al Malik Al Saleh. And over there you will find a car that goes to Fustat and the museum. Welcome to the Egyptian Museum of Civilization. In fact, only in this museum you can see the royal mummies because they transferred it in 2021. So only here you can see it. But I'm not really sure if we can take pictures or videos of the mummies inside or not. We will see inside. If you can see down there, so this is supposed to be the hole where the royal mummies exist. We will get to that later, but first we will start by having a tour around the museum itself. In fact, inside the museum, the mask is mandatory, so you can see my face sometimes. I will keep it like that, but okay, we'll just check everything here. I will try to show you every single thing inside this museum and uh, I'm sure that we'll enjoy it. The stone tools used to be used by ancient Egyptians. I think this one is one of the oldest skeletons found for an Egyptian. It's called Mazlet Khatr Skelton. So that's why it exists here in the museum. But it's not a mummy, it's just a skeleton. Those are some of the tools that ancient Egyptians used to use for farming and for agriculture. And this one was responsible of the land. Measuring the land, dividing it, I think. I would like to show you this one. Actually, this one is so interesting because it carries the name of King Ka and uh, King Ka was one of the kings of the first dynasty of ancient Egypt and this is the stone that carries his name so it's very ancient this one is very old it's to the civilization of Nakara Nakara is part of prehistoric Egypt so that's why it's very important to show the Nakara to show the part of very historic Egypt. Can you see? 3800 to 3500 BC. It's very ancient, right? I'm not really sure what is that because it seems like Isis was Horus, a presentation of Isis of Horus. I'm not really sure because there is no card here. It describes nothing. And some people used to say that uh, the description of Lady Mary and Jesus Christ is inspired from the ancient Egyptian st uh, statues like that. I'm not really sure about it, but it looks interesting. The tools of power. Those are the tools, the personal tools of, of the Pharaoh, because it represents his ultimate power over the land of Egypt and his connection with gods. And this is a queen, actually. This is a statue of a queen, a sphinx of a queen, not a king. 
I'm sure you will like this one because it's all a representation of how ancient Egyptians used to work. It represents the life of ancient Egyptian and they are baking the bread. This is a bread. This is a real bread, an ancient bread, an ancient food. Can you imagine? They are baking. That's how bread was important for ancient Egyptians. And still today, bread is very important for Egyptians. This one for the engineering part. It just represent how ancient Egyptians were very advanced in engineering architect. Their way in building. And this one over here, Sinmut. Sinmut was a very important uh, engineer. Special as a type of queen, as a time of Queen Hatshepsut. I mean the temple of Fildere Bahari. He's the one who designed it and built it. Those are the tools. Look, those are the protective gods. Those used to be the gods of all Egypt. So we have here uh, like gods like Nakhbet, Wajet, the winged uh, cobra, Hathor, the cow. Egyptians used to worship cows. So Hathor was like, uh, represents the kindness, represents many things for ancient Egyptians. They really loved the cows for the milk, for the life. They worshipped it and respected it. Well, this one over here is about textile. It's all about textile. Textile, what ancient Egyptians used for textile. Even the explanation is here. Textile, different types of fabrics. And this one is a royal, uh, okay, the observer of royal textile. This one over here. And this standing one, let's see, who is that? Is this that guy? Yes. His name, he oversees Abar Egypt. Okay, he oversees Abar Egypt. Well, this is the judge, Ka Harset. I don't know much about this guy, but he sounds to be very important. See the details? How he's carved inside the woods. I mean, like all the drawings. It's amazing, right? This one here is Tahut. Tahut was an important god. He was the god of wisdom in ancient Egypt. And even many great kings named themselves, choose a name, their name was, was attached to Tahut. Like the king Tahut Moses III is the one who built the greatest Egyptian empire. And this is the Egyptian writer, Habi the scribe. Habi the scribe. She was a female. She was a writer. That's how females used to play a big role in ancient Egypt. To be a writer in ancient Egypt, that was such a privilege. Because you had to learn the sacred words, the hieroglyph language, of course. Well, this is my favorite part here. The story of Sinohe. This is one of the oldest stories in ancient Egypt. And in fact, there are two versions of this story. This story in brief, it speaks about an Egyptian soldier who used to work in uh, the army of, uh, of King, uh, I think, Sinusertes I. So somehow, for some reason, Sunohi uh, escaped the army. I don't know. I think he was like he was accused in in the murder of, of the king's father, something like that. King, uh, I think Amenemhat the first, and um, and yeah, he spent many years outside Egypt, and then he sent a message to the king: "I still miss the land of Egypt. Please let me come." Uh, this was one of the stories. It speaks in brief about his life and how he it's, it's all about his love to Egypt how this soldier loved Egypt it's very important but there is another modern story about it and it's not really detailed the other story is, is full of adventure like he smuggled secrets of the enemy to the land of Egypt this is the story 
they are telling the story here the story of the general Snohi the one of the masterpieces of the literal work of ancient Egypt yes we used to study it actually in history classes this one over here is the chair of the queen it's the chair of one of the Egyptian queens well this was I think it was a royal tent something like that of one of the kings let's see inside there is this coffin it's not made of gold it's wood actually but painted by gold and royal boxes I think many things here the baldachin of princess she was a princess is it M. Heb the second well, this one over here, this is Tahotmosis the third, the greatest Egyptian general and the one who built the first Egyptian empire. He was a very important king, actually. He had many achievements, but this is not his best statue. His best statue, not in this museum. The other one in the Luxor Museum in Luxor City. This one over there is King Amnemhad the third, and he was an important king in ancient Egypt but one special thing about this statue that after the Hyksos entered Egypt in the second intermediate period they used to curve their names on the Egyptian statues so it carry also I think the name of King Abibi the king of the Hyksos those are some of the funerary masks like masks used and taken from some coffins some bodies from the 19th dynasty, I think. This one is not a royal coffin. This coffin belonged to just one of the engineers and workers, but still beautiful, right? I mean, like, you don't have to be a pharaoh or a king to have a great coffin. Even you can get a good wooden coffin. That was great. He was a chief, chief of workers, he used to supervise so to supervise works this one is senate senate is like a royal game it looks like a chess but it's not a chess it used to be played by kings well i will tell you a very interesting story from the bible about this game that it said that moses once when he was a kid he used to play with the pharaoh this game and he used to win he played with the pharaoh 10 times and he won times and he was just a kid then the pharaoh became so angry and he said no this is not uh, a normal kid and he was so angry then um, so somehow God wanted to protect him so the lady who was responsible of raising Moses she said told the Pharaoh, no he was just a kid it was a chance and she offered Moses two things one was a date and the other one was a burned stone uh, and uh, she told the pharaoh, okay, let's see which one he will choose. He chose the burnt stone and he put it inside his mouth. And that's why he had a problem in speaking that once he speaks, um, his words w w weren't really clear. So when God chose him to be a prophet and to send him to the land of Egypt, he asked God to first to, 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 to fix this problem for him. He told God, I'm so, I have a problem with my tongue when I speak and they make fun of me when I speak. So please solve this problem for me and God did so I'm not really sure about the details of this story but such story exists I'm not really sure if it's right or wrong uh, true or false but it exists I'm really sure about it this one is my favorite king in fact Akhenaton I mean Akhenaton he, he never cared about looking so perfect it's okay for him to look like belly big legs and he was so religious. He thought about unifying all the gods of Egypt into one god. He was a very innovating in, in religion. And he built a new capital in Al Amarna. And he used to write his own prayers to his god Aton. This coffin belongs to a lady. Not famous lady. Her name is Lady Isis. So this is a sphinx, but the different thing about this sphinx that was from the Ptolemy period. So even when Greek uh, ruled over Egypt, because the Ptolemy dynasty was a Greek dynasty, they uh, adopted the Egyptian culture 
and start carving statues to look like Egyptian pharaohs. So they were considered to be pharaohs of Egypt because they loved the culture and they followed the Egyptian religion. There is no much details about this one, but I can tell you this one is extremely heavy. It's so heavy and it also belongs to a lady and it's very beautiful. Wait, let me show you. I mean, look at it. Look at the details, the curving. And all that in, in, in that kind of stone. It's amazing. This one belongs to King Merimbitah. Merimbitah and the goddess Mut. So Merimbitah was a very important king. Because Merimbitah himself, he was son of King Ramesses the Great, Ramesses the Second. Over here represents Maat. Maat used to represent the justice, the fairness in ancient Egypt, and its sign was a feather. Uh, yes, you can see in the hand, there is like a sign of a feather. I don't know if you can see it, but it is a feather. That one represents Maat. So Maat was also important in the judgment, uh, in, the, in the after war, in, after death, in the afterlife for the ancient Egyptian. So uh, if once, once I will try to show you the book of death of ancient Egyptians and you will see, you will see that might always exist because you measure the heart of Egyptian with the feather of might. That's how important it was. This one over here belongs to an Egyptian chariot that used to be attached to horses. This video is describing it and see. You can see all the drawings, the king, the details. And on front of it, a presentation of the slaves, the captives. So yeah, pharaohs used to be so proud about their victory. This one over here is a funerary furniture from one of the tombs. Not a tomb of a pharaoh. So even non-royal tombs were great and beautiful. This one over here was one of the ministers. It was one of the ministers of ancient Egypt. And that's why he got his own statue. His name is Basser, the vizier Basser. And those are some jewels. Some jewels of one of the Egyptian princesses that's nice this is the statue of the purification by water of the pharaoh on the other side you can see Tot, and in the left you can see uh, I think this one is Horus yes it's Horus well, look at that one this column over here I think it's made completely from granite and look at the details inside. Look, the drawings, the names. The cartouches always represent names. I'm not really sure if I can get any of those names. I would love to read all of that. Okay, I'm not really familiar of the stories of those pieces. Does it look nice? I'm just trying to show you everything inside this museum. And I will try to explain as long as I can and as long as I know. Welcome to the music. The music in old, in ancient Egypt, I'm sorry. This is the harp. This one is the harp. It represents the harp. And this one over there, this one is the ney. The ney is still used till our modern days. It looks like a stick, but still used in our modern day, especially in South Egypt. Well, this one over here, this is Amun-Ra, the greatest god. And he got a face of a ram. That's why if you go to the Karnak one day and see the ram's root, because it represents Amun-Ra, the god of gods. And this one is, it looks like Horus, but he's not Horus. He's Ra Hor Ahti. And um, I'm not really sure. 
I'm not really sure about this story. I just know about Amun Ra. Well, welcome to trading in ancient Egypt. So, they used to use those boats for trading. And this is the crew over here. Some of these used to be used only in the Nile, the big ones in the seas. So yeah, Egyptians had a very great fleet. Cosmetics. This is women's section in ancient Egypt. And trust me, even men, even pharaohs used to use some cosmetic materials for themselves, used to decorate themselves, both men and women. But this mostly just for women. I think those ones are mirrors and those are the cosmetic tools. Baskets. Egyptians were very good in making baskets, different kind of baskets. This one is very important in the Egyptian mythology because it represents the birth of the Egyptian goddess Isis. Here we got the goddess note and she and and this is the process of the birth of the goddess is this i didn't know what are those tools there are many tools over here i think they 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 were used for surgery in ancient egypt that's a very nice vase over here looks nice and over here too, some statues. I think they are servants in the royal palace. They are carrying things for the pharaohs. But there is no explanation about those pieces and what do they represent. This one is measuring too, to measure the weight. Those are also some jewels that Egyptian women used to use. To decorate themselves this one here this is the moon god consul who is a very important god also in ancient egypt this is the god's wife the god's wife so one of the royal uh, women used to be the god's wife like something like the high priest of the temple of amun dedicating her life for a moon and those are some royal statues okay so we are done with the pharaonic we are done with the pharaonic section of this museum and now we will go to the roman section this one is nilos the god of the nile from the roman time but he was beheaded and he looks so Roman. Everything looks so Roman in, in the curving, in, in the way, so Roman. This one over here, this is Ben Mench, he's a man. And he was the ruler of the city of Dandra. And this masterpiece, this is a music floor. It was a floor, not a ceiling, not a wall. It was a music floor. Look at this piece of clothes. was used to be like a shirt, a clothes, but there is no explanation uh, of the owner of this piece. This one is from the Ptolemaic age. So even the details, that tells you how in the Ptolemaic age they used to, to keep the Egyptian culture. Those are some coins. Some coins and some papyrus. It's called Zenon Peperus, and he was the finance minister. So these were his calculations. It's all about finance here. His financial records, the coins. This one over here is douche treasure. Look at the crown. Look at it. It's amazing, right? And all the bracelets the necklace 
a masterpiece. The crown is amazing. And the bracelets. Wait, I think the other side is better. The rings. The hand bracelets. It was a complete treasure. Okay, so now we are done with the Potomac and uh, the Roman age. And now we will move to the Coptic art at the time of the Christian Egypt. And yeah, let's start. This one is a Coptic wall. Look at the crosses. Cross, 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 cross. You can see the cross. This one is called a stole, and it used to be worn by the diacons of the Coptic Church. And you can see all the symbols of Christianity. So those ones also are some textiles and some coins from the Coptic time, the time of Christian Egypt. Textile, Coptic, you can see the icons here, the icon here. Look at this one, this one called Mengalea, or as they say in English, uh, Ibagalea, and it used to uh, to keep the Holy Bible in Christian Egypt. It was a big box just to keep the Bible. And you can see the Bible is translated here. I think it's in Coptic and Arabic. You can see the language here. This side is Coptic, the other side is Arabic. So this is a part of a dome and the icons here of lady mary baby jesus christ well and that's how egyptians used to draw icons in coptic way okay those are also some pieces from the coptic period this one over there is a crown and you can see here the cross this was a lamb this one was a lamp. They used to put the oil inside. Okay, so we are done with Coptic Egypt. And now we will move to Islamic Egypt. And I think the biggest sections here, the biggest section is the Pharaonic. And the second biggest section is Islamic. Let's see. This one here is Mashrabiya. So it's a way that allows people inside the house to sue the street without allowing people in the street to see the people inside uh, the house. And um, yeah, Mashrabiya was a very important in the decoration of the Egyptian houses, especially in Islamic Egypt. Those one are the Torah cases. And what you don't know that many Jews used to live in Egypt. And uh, especially at the time of the Fatimid, the Ayyubid, the Mamluks, freedom of practicing religion existed. Those are some Islamic ceramic vessels. And you can see the decorations. And I can tell this is a Fatimid. Fatimid used to draw that way. Is Basin and Ewer. And they were used for washing the hands before eating. They were very important. Uh, for for the kings to have a special servant responsible of this thing to wash his hands every time before he eats and sometimes it used to uh, they, they they used it for um, the preparation for cleaning themselves before the prey here are the mamluk lamps they used to call it the mishkawa so they used to put the oil inside those lamps and after that, the, a, a piece of fire and gives light from the Mamluk period. Okay, this carpet from the Ottoman period, the time Ottomans used to rule over Egypt. And it's completely like full of red, the Ottoman color. This is a bulbet or a member of one of the mosques. And you can see the decoration was highly decorated. I mean, 
in Islamic culture, the decoration was very, very, very important, especially at the time of the Mamluks, because Mamluks felt many things inside Egypt. And this door also. Look at the decorations. It's very nice. Some of them metal work. I think most of it is made of um, copper, I think. Not really sure. Look at that box also. And this one is a sensor to give a good smell. And this one used to keep the Holy Quran. So we have seen many things here. Special boxes to protect the Bible, special boxes to protect the Torah. This box over here for the Quran. This is another box for the Quran. And you can see the writings in the side. But this one is very big. This is very big. This one is Khidewi Ismail. This one, this is the one who ordered building the Suez Canal. Those one over here, the Astrolab. They used it for navigation and they were very important. And Greek people invented astrolabs, but Muslims, uh, they developed it in a very, very, very great way and used it in a very <coughs> good way. This sphere over here, the sky sphere, astronomical globe. And this is, this one is a sand, uh, a sand watch for the time. There are also some replicas, like for example, this is a replica of the Kutab, and inside a man is helping kids to memorize the Holy Quran. And you will see also many writings on the wall describing the history of Egypt, like the Sabil, the fountain. They used to, to build it for people so they can drink uh, clean water. And you can see uh, like Sal Sabil, there was a part from which the water comes and the Sakka, the one who fills the Sabil, the water carrier. This one is Muhammad Talat Pasha Harp and he was a very important man. He was an economist, a great Egyptian economist. He built the first Egyptian independent bank and he put the basis of, uh, of the finance and the economy for uh, modern Egypt. This one belongs to Muhammad Ali Basha, the Albanian general who became the ruler of Egypt and the one who built uh, modern Egypt. And at his time, Egypt was a great military and economical power. And this is King Fuad. King Fuad the first, his son, King Farouk, was the last Egyptian king and he was very proud of his mustache. you can see. This is the Kiswa, the Kiswit al Kaaba. So you know Mecca is a very important city for Muslims in general because of the existence of al Kaaba, where Muslims go for pilgrimage and for many years Egypt was responsible of, uh, of making this piece of clothes that covers the Kaaba because uh, the textile in Egypt was very advanced and Egypt was a very rich country but now it's made inside Saudi Arabia but this is one of the kiswas that used to be made by Egypt and sent to the Kaaba. This one over here is Al Mahmal and Al Mahmal was a very important thing it's attached to the kiswa because after making the kiswa in Egypt they used to build this mahmal and they used to put uh, the kiswa inside the mahmal and put the mahmal on a camel and the mahmal moves from Egypt on this camel to Mecca so uh, and it was like a big ceremony people go in the streets to watch the mahmal and the camel who will go to to Mecca it was a very important thing for Egypt 
uh, because Egypt at that time, especially at the time of the Mamluks and Ayyubid, was responsible of the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. This one here is the Holy Quran, just to show you the art of calligraphy in, in Egypt. And those keys, I'm not really sure, are they connected to the Kaaba or something like special keys made for the opening of the Kaaba, for the local of the Kaaba, I'm not really sure, but yeah, they were important, they were very important. In my tour, I met a very interesting person, Professor uh, Musa Kimdon, and he speaks Arabic very good. And he came to Egypt because he's publishing his book, Al Marwahatul Warakhiyatu Al Jamila. So, would you like to give us a presentation about yourself? Okay. My, my name is Dr. Musa Kim from South Korea. Now I'm working as an honor professor at Kachin University. So, in this time, I came to Egypt to participate in the Cairo International Book Fair. I translated the, uh, the beautiful hill, the beautiful will into Arabic. So maybe this book is very useful for the Arab girls and the Arab women. Yeah, I think many people will not believe that you speak Arabic as you're Korean. So would you like to say something in Arabic also? In, in what? Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Those are water hours and they were all of them are made in a city called Al Mahalla. That's why they called Al Mahallawi. And they were so skilled in building and making, I'm sorry, this kind of hours. They're so special, so expensive also. This books for chess, for chess playing. And they used to keep all the pieces inside the books. Those over here are some ceramic vessels. You can see the decorations, the color, but they are modern. Some modern art also, modern vessels. This is the statue of the Egyptian farmer, the female farmer. It belongs to Mahmoud Mukhtar and Mahmoud Mukhtar, he was a very, very, very important uh, Egyptian artist. He built many things. This is his masterpiece, Nahdut Mas. Those are some of the traditional clothes of uh, the Egyptian women, especially in Upper Egypt. I mean, believe it or not, but till today in Upper Egypt, some women still wear uh, the same clothes. And those are the jewels. Those pieces still used. Okay, so basically I finished my tour here in, in the upper level. We started by the pharaonic period and after that we moved forward uh, to the Ptolemy period and the Roman period. And after that we moved to the Coptic period and we started with the early Islamic period, the middle Islamic period, and we ended with the late Islamic period. And after that we started with the time of modern Egypt, Muhammad Ali. And we have seen everything about uh, the Egyptian contribution in art and religion. And can you imagine this museum is considered to be one of the smallest museum that shows uh, uh, Egyptian monuments and uh, artifacts. Some museums are very big and I'm very excited and waiting for the opening of the Egyptian Grand Museum to go and also see all the pieces inside. So I'm not really sure if they allow photography uh, inside uh, the mummy chambers, but we will go, we will go down and we will see. I'm moving down there to the royal mummy's chamber. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure if photography is allowed inside, but we will see. They will tell us. We 
those are images of all the mummies inside. And those are the mummies. Those are the real mummies. This one of Ramesses. This one is Ramesses. I'm not really sure about this one. And I'm not also sure about this one. Okay, they're giving you here some information about the royal mummies. Those are like ID cards for the mummies. Actually, the way is very dark, just to give you the feeling of going inside one of the Egyptian tombs. It's amazing, right? Well, in fact, I asked them down there if we can take pictures of the mummies or not, but they say it's not allowed to take pictures of the royal mummies. But I think since we are here, it would be good to give you some information about what mummies you are going to see. So basically, you will start with King Sikhnur Ra, the one who started the Liberation War against uh, the Hyksos. And after that, you will move forward. You will, you will see the mummy of uh, Ahmus Nefertari. She was a queen, wife of King Ahmus, the one who established, established the 18th dynasty. After that, you will move forward. You will see uh, the sons of Amenhotep I, the second, uh, Ram, uh, the first, the second, the third, the greatest general ever, you will see him. And after that, you will see also uh, the mummy of Queen Hatshepsut. Okay, so here you can see the timeline of the Egyptian history, starting from the pre-dynastic period, after that the early uh, dynasty, the dynastic period, the old kingdom, the first intermediate period, the middle kingdom, the second intermediate period, the new kingdom, the third intermediate period, the late period, the Batomic period, the Roman period, the Byzantine area, the Rashidun uh, Khalifat, the Umayyad Khalifat, the Abbasid Khalifat, the Ptolemy dynasty, the Ikhshidi dynasty, the Fatimi dynasty or Fatimi Khalifat, the Ayyubid dynasty, uh, the Mamluk dynasty, Ottoman period, Muhammad Ali dynasty, and the Republic of Egypt today. Okay, I guess this is the end of our tour today. I've almost seen everything. We just didn't take videos or pictures with the royal mummies but you know everything about the royal mummies and uh, yeah i think there is a mummy in the egyptian museum i'll try to make a visit there and if you have any ideas or other places you would like to visit just uh, write in the comments but wait i think there is another side of the museum here that we'll have to see before we leave the one the view next to the lake so wait i will show you Alright, so this was our tour today in the Egyptian Museum of the Civilization.